In this video, we present pearls and pitfalls of the laparoscopic approach to distal pancreatectomy. Here are our relevant disclosures. Our patient was a 49-year-old male with no significant past medical or surgical history who presented with a four-month history of attacks of sweating, dizziness, and loss of consciousness. He noted that he was snacking every two to three hours to prevent symptomatic hypoglycemia and his blood sugar range on outpatient monitoring was 30 to 40. A CT of the abdomen and pelvis was obtained that demonstrated a one centimeter hyperenhancing mass within the distal pancreas consistent with an insulinoma. In the coronal views, again, we can appreciate the mass in the distal aspect of the pancreas in close approximation to the splenic artery and vein. In this enhanced view, we can see the mass in close approximation to the splenic hilum. And in the enhanced coronal view, we can see the location of the lesion in relation to the overlying splenic artery and splenic vein. Despite the recommendations from our tumor board for an EUS with possible FNA, the patient elected to proceed with surgery for laparoscopic enucleation versus possible distal pancreatectomy. Initial access was gained with a 5 mm optical viewing trocar in the left upper quadrant. Additional ports as shown here were placed under direct visualization. A general sweep of the abdomen was performed and the gastrocolic ligament was divided with bipolar shears. A transabdominal silk suture is utilized to retract the stomach out of the field of the dissection. Utilizing the bipolar shears, the peritoneum overlying the pancreas is opened in order to further facilitate the dissection. The curved tip of the bipolar shears allows for fine dissection within the distal aspect of the pancreas, thereby allowing us to expose several vessels within the distal aspect in close proximity to the spleen, including the splenic artery superiorly. The laparoscopic ultrasound was then used to further localize the tumor within the distal aspect of the pancreas. The use of the laparoscopic ultrasound is invaluable for this purpose. Next, we obtained proximal control of the splenic artery by dissecting posteriorly to the artery and encircling the vessel with a vessel loop secured with an endo clip. This allows for a convenient handle to further facilitate dissection of the vessels. In addition, in the case of bleeding, this allows for good proximal control of the artery. The dissection is continued at the inferior aspect of the pancreas, thereby reflecting the pancreas anteriorly off of the retroperitoneum. The use of the bipolar shears with the curved tip is effective for controlling small vessels that are found within this plane. The dissection was carried laterally in order to further define several vessels seen on CT scan that coursed anteriorly to the location of the mass, as confirmed on laparoscopic ultrasound. As seen here, a laparoscopic articulating retractor is a useful tool to reflect the pancreas up off of the retroperitoneum and away from the splenic artery at the superior aspect of the pancreas. In this view, the pancreas is reflected anteriorly in order to facilitate the posterior dissection of the proximal splenic vein. This dissection is carried out laterally to better define the distal aspect of the vein, thereby allowing us to define the course of the splenic artery and the splenic vein in relationship to the pancreas inferiorly. The dissection is continued in order to divide dense adhesions from the distal pancreas to the spleen. Given the close adherence of these pancreatic adhesions to the splenic hilum, a small amount of bleeding was encountered while dissecting with the bipolar shears. This bleeding was able to be controlled through the use of direct pressure with the suction, in addition to the placement of a sponge into the abdominal cavity to provide direct pressure. After attaining initial hemostasis, brisk bleeding was then noted from the area of the splenic hilum. This was attempted to be controlled through the deployment of an endoscopic clip. Given the presence of ongoing bleeding despite the deployment of our endoscopic clip, direct pressure was again applied using the sponge. A cellulose-based hemostatic agent was then applied in an attempt to attain additional hemostasis. 
Given the presence of ongoing hemorrhage, the decision was made to proceed with a splenectomy. The splenic artery was divided with a tan load of the stapler, and then the pancreatic tail was transected using a black load of the stapler. After firing of the stapler, the staple lines were inspected for adequate hemostasis. The dissection was carried laterally in order to completely detach the pancreatic tail and the suspensory ligaments of the spleen were divided with the bipolar shears. The distal pancreas and spleen were placed into two separate endocatch bags and removed from the abdominal cavity. A Jackson Pratt drain was placed within the dissection bed. The patient's hospital course was uneventful and he was discharged at home on post-operative day number three with the JP in place having received all necessary vaccines. Pathology confirmed the presence of a 1.2 centimeter benign insulinoma confined to the pancreatic parenchyma with a negative resection margin. At one week follow-up, the patient reported that he was doing well and tolerating a regular diet with minimal pain. He denied any further symptomatic hypoglycemic episodes. The key points of this case include the use of a transabdominal suture in order to facilitate additional exposure of the pancreas within the lesser sac. Also, the use of bipolar energy device for tissue dissection is very helpful. It is important to obtain early proximal control of the splenic artery. The laparoscopic ultrasound is a useful tool for tumor localization and defining anatomy. Additionally, articulating laparoscopic retractors help facilitate the dissection. There are multiple methods available to control bleeding. However, in the case of refractory bleeding, assess the need for splenectomy or conversion to an open procedure. Thank you.